I'm just saying goodbye. Hello, everybody. Well, there we are. Camera over here. Uh, Tom Matuski here for Thursday Afternoon Live with the Matuska Tax Derby Supply Company along with Brett Wingfield. And uh, we're going to continue on today with our, with our hybrid fish mount. And um, just to review what we've done in the past four weeks, I believe. Yeah. Um, like we always say, we like to drag these projects out. We want to make them thorough. We don't want to um, send you with some half-baked information. Um, the whole thing is about using artificial parts on your fish. And um, artificial fins can be very helpful. This is uh, a northern pike that we just completed and we replaced all the fins on this northern pike that looked like this. I mean, he was pretty rough shape. Um, he'd been put in a keeper and like we said last week, you can fix these um, you can fix them and make them look presentable, but nothing as good as these are gonna be. And so what we did was we got a, a bunch of northern pike fins. This is a small mouth, but we took fins, we put a little motion for attitude into yeah. them. Just did that with a heat gun, hairdryer heat gun, um, painted them, put them back on um, the fish and um, it was an awful good looking fish. And, was. and really the only part of the fish that was real was the trunk of the body and the head. And on this one, we even um, included an artificial head and uh, that can be pretty helpful. Some people will say, but it's not my real fish. No, but this does not have to be rebuilt. It's cast from a real fish. Um, this particular head was waters by Klaus. Um, we've had some exceptional heads from um, Gary Brock that are yeah. beautiful. Um, full throat detail, as is the Waters by Klaus one. Um, they made this one special for us just because we had a difficult time fitting that fish. And when you order the heads, mostly there will be a, a length from the gill cover to the tip of the bottom jaw. Um, there will be a height and there will be a width. The width can usually be adjusted by put them in hot water. We do that every once in a while. We'll com compress them a little bit or we will spread them to show the gills a little bit. So in our interim, we worked on this fish just a little. I did uh, to save in, in the essence of time, um, I replaced this fin, I put it on, I put on that fin. Today I'm gonna show you how to do the dorsal fin so you don't have to watch all the fins. And also, we find it kind of helpful to paint the fins before we put them on. That way we're not getting the overspray all over the fish. Um, you can even paint your body, then put the fish fins on, and then you just have to paint the union, which, which can be tricky sometimes. But, uh, so I, I, I guess I'd call this a base, base color scheme. You know, it, it's yeah. gonna need some touching up, but it gives you an idea. Um, this is the, uh, the dorsal fin, the soft and spiny dorsal. And usually when you put these on, now you remember when we left you last week, we had just mounted this fish. We brought the skin up to where the fins go. Um, we like using uh, the Euro pins. Um, they're just handy and they're easy for old guys to get their fingers on and get a good grip on them and pull. Yeah, do. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so we just took Euro pins and we pin that skin up tight. And anytime you're working with fish skin, just know that it's going to shrink and it will shrink back. Um, this guy shrunk back. I have a pretty good, a pretty good gap here, but it's not going to be a problem for me to epoxy that difference and make it look like, like the scales. Um, and what else? We showed you how to make a body, how to make a pattern. You make a gorgeous pattern for the people. And anytime, whether you're using an artificial, or I mean, I'm sorry, a commercially bought body, or you're gonna carve your own, make sure to take good measurements because you're gonna get that body out of the box and you're gonna wonder why it doesn't fit. All you have to do is take your measurement sheet that you made and compare it and you will know whether you have to make that commercial body bigger or smaller. And uh, if you carve your own body, the foam's a little bit softer, but you can rasp it down. 
Um, if you have to, you can build them up. If you have to build the commercial ones up, you can build them up with foam. It's a little bit, sometimes we'll use clay. Um, there's lots of different um, methods to you know, alter your body. Um, I've seen you a whole lot of times cut V's out just like you would a deer sure. neck or yep. something like that and you put lots of action into them and turn them into something completely different than you bought. Um, so there's a lot of different ways and someday maybe we'll do fish alterations. That would be sure. a, a good one. Uh, chime in and let us know where you're from. Like and share, like and share, like and share. Um, don't forget to do that. You're getting good at that. I know. I think I got that from Bill O'Reilly when he first started on Fox News. He'd say, like a chair, like a chair, like a chair. And he didn't know the website very good because the computer's just started. <laughs> um, anyway, I'll, uh, um, we're going to leapfrog here a little bit just so we don't uh, waste too much time and make you fall asleep watching one process. Um, I will start on the dorsal fin. And I think while I'm doing that, you can watch me work on that a little bit. And in the meantime, um, I'll probably give this head to you and you can get ready to show them how to set an eye. And uh, there's things that have to be done to this fish. The union between the fins and the body has to be put together and sculpted really nice and natural. And we refer to these all the time. We make these here in the shop. Um, we just catch a fish and lay them out and. Um, you can pour them in rubber, you can pour them in auto body putty, but we have these, we have a whole wall of these hanging, whether it's fish or deer or skunks or possums, I think we got them all. Um, but this just tells you a whole lot, but what I'd be referring to today is I'm going to be looking at this union between that soft dorsal and the body because I'm going to want to re-sculpt that back in. Same with the tail, anal fin. Um, any of those areas. I am also, I don't have much to refer to here, but where that head joins the body, when we put that, that back on, we're gonna pay attention to the size of the scales because we're probably gonna have to re-duplicate some scales up here. Um, and these are just pretty handy. These, um, you can probably buy them, but they're very easy to make, and that would be another good live, is how to make your own reference material and maybe even photograph some fish. And, kangaroos or whatever critters we can get in the shop here. Um, so that's that's kind of important when you're trying to duplicate nature. You know, the only thing you have is don't guess at anything. You have photos, you have reference casts, and the materials that we get from the supply companies. So um, in saying that, I'm going to start, and I'll show you what I would do with this. Um, fish fin, I'll describe it a little bit, and then I'll probably turn you over to Brett and he can show you how to set a, set an eye. And um, to start with, I want to situate my, my fin. So what I did with this artificial fin is I looked to see how it fit in here, and it fit um, basically pretty good. It was a little bit on the long side, so I actually I probably shouldn't tell you this. I actually extended my spiny dorsal by about a quarter inch up here. Oh, my goodness. Um, and for a customer, I don't think there's a customer that ever would ever know. Also, it did not fit very good because I have a little extension on here. So I carved that out. I notched that just a little bit. And my fish body was car curved slightly more than my fins were. Oh. So I just warmed it up with a heat gun, mm -hmm. and I put it in here, and I just forced it down and made it conform to the body, and it conformed pretty good. Looks very nice. Then, the next thing I would do is, uh, now, now also up here, where I had the pins, I had little heaped up mounds where the pins were, and uh, I took those with a Dremel, and I ground those down, that left me with a whole bunch of little leather tags up here. So I took a little fish sealer to mm -hmm. saturate into that skin. And once I saturate that into that skin, I can take a little fine sandpaper and don't go against the scales, but I can pet, pet that skin and make this lay down really, really nice and smooth. Then, we're about ready to attach this. Make sure you, once it's on, it's gonna be tough to get it off. 
Um, I'm going to put it on center down the body. Looks like I can work with that. We took the heat gun and we warmed up these fins and put a little bit of motion into them. It's not necessary. You can, you can have um, a straight fin. Here's how they'll come to you. Real nice and straight. Okay, then what I like to do is I want to hold this in place while I do my work. I don't want to be sculpting it and all of a sudden have the fin fall out. So I like to take super glue and we use a lot of this SIG medium super glue here. Um, it's one of my favorite um, glues. We also have Tech Bond, which is another really yeah. good one. Um, but this is um, good super glue. It does not set fast and it's a slightly thick viscosity, meaning it doesn't run all over. Um, it's not gonna be running down your fish. We use this on our bird hints when we attach bird skin around the bird bills. And with those little micro applicators, if you put the micro applicator on here, um, you can make a pinpoint of super glue. And would you hand me the quick shot over there? To activate this, we're gonna use quick shot and it's a little bit acetone type material. Comes out in a real fine mist, but this will probably set up in what would you say, a minute or two? Without. With, yeah, without quick shot, with quick shot, maybe two or three seconds or less. Yeah. So to hold this in place while I work, I'm just gonna put a little bit of super glue on a part of it there. Give it a little shot, a quick shot. And I'm just gonna strategically glue in periodically here. Every and I don't have to do the whole thing. My epoxy that I used to um, sculpt in the fin bases is going to do it for me. Okay, now that fin is anchored on there. And if you want to put all your fins on, um, that's kind of nice to do. You get a good look at what you're trying to accomplish. Um, if you want to put all of your fins on, um, just glue them like I just did, that's, that's pretty helpful too. I can see better look at your face than I was riding off the body here. <laughs> okay, now we need to build the void between the body, hopefully it's not too big, between the body and the base of the fish fin. Now, some people, when we teach people how to do this, a lot of times we come up and we always say, what'd you use for a tool, a shovel? <laughs> Looks like they kind of shoveled it on. Um, there is a very intricate process. Don't try to do the whole thing at once. Do little bits by little bits by little bits. Make it look good. If you're happy with the first quarter inch you did, do another quarter inch and just keep going down, you know, front and back. We're gonna do that scene. You're going to get really, really fast at it and um, um, get better at it. And once it's painted and glossed, you'll never know that that fin does not belong to this fish. So um, you, can, you can rebuild that muscle and that little fin base. You can rebuild it with, oh man, there's all kinds of things. There's um, epoxy sculpt. There's fix it sculpt by Ave Studio. Um, Dave Brummel has been supplying taxidermists with epoxies as long as we can remember. Um, there's epoxy clay, and they all have a little bit different feel, a little bit different set times, a little bit different colors, and you're just gonna have to try a few, and, and if you haven't used all the different ones, we'll give you some suggestions of what we like, and um, get some and try it. And originally, the first stuff we ever had, I think was called Pliacre, and Pliacre um, was a lot like Fix-It Skull, Epoxy Skull, and it was, I think it was made for temporary fillings. Dentists oh. use it, they mixed A and B together, 
and they would fill people's teeth with it. And then when the gold shipment came in, I assume they would auger out the epoxy and they'd fill it with gold. But uh, Playa Cree was one of the first products we ever had. Another good one um, was uh, is Magic Skull. Magic Skull. And, and we've had some in the past that are so difficult to mix with your fingers that your fingers get really wore out mixing it together. And uh, so a nice, creamy, easy one that feathers out nice, you'll appreciate that compared to some we have. And Ricky Crane um, is the formulator or the, I, I think we, not the baker, represents clay, K-L-E-I. And uh, it too, I'll say it's a, an epoxy like all the rest, but it's really not. It's similar in the way it works. But we've been using the clay and we really like clay. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I need a little water. Do you have water there? Mm -hmm. Now, A and B looks just like any of the other epoxies you've used. Equal amounts. It's interesting in the fact that, and clay's a little bit new to me, you've been using it a long time, I have not. Uh, what's interesting is it's very sticky. So in order to mix it, you wanna, we'll go over the sink sometimes and just knead it between your fingers. I'm just dipping it in a little water here. And I'm gonna knead it together and the water keeps it from sticking to your fingers. Once, you have a, a real even color. You can't have any marbling. If you have marbling in there, if you look at it, there's kind of streaks. When you get completely done, tomorrow you're gonna to come in, it's gonna be um, soft, hard, soft, yeah, hard, soft, hard. Bad. You gotta get a nice, even color. And you colored this the other day, and it took- I did, it took color. It color really great. Well. Yep, exceptionally well with oil paint. It's a little, um, a little darker than some of our Foxy putties, but it really took color nice, oil paint. Okay, I think I've got a really good mix. Now, it's very interesting to me that, that my wet fingers work really well, um, keeping it off my fingers. Now when I start working with it, if I use water on my tools or water on my hands, doesn't work, does it? It doesn't. It's terrible. Doesn't like that. Um, and like right now, it's so sticky I can't even hardly touch it. Now I can dip my finger in water, but water does not work near as good as alcohol. Good. And if you give me a little alcohol, yeah. Um, these cups are some of the handiest things we've ever had in the shop, and. Um, we got these for our Createx paints. They come in great big sleeves, and we even clean them up. We yeah. do dishes with them, but uh, <laughs> um, they're great for water paint, alcohol, waters, they're nice little cups. Jello okay. shots. Jello shots. Now, <laughs> with alcohol, I can touch that, and it's nice and slick and, and slippery, and it doesn't stick to my fingers. The alcohol works good, um, rubbing alcohol. Yeah. We use 90%, this is, or 91, this says 70, um, but we have a refillable. Does it make a difference? I don't see a big difference, no, but um, we've been using You drink many. enough of it, it will. <laughs> um, now, doesn't matter as far as tools, you're gonna pick out your favorite tools. A lot of times my go-to is my Chicago cutlery knife. Um, I can get a little bit, I can scrape it off. I can, I can put it on here and then work it with a brush. Um, these sign tools are tough Very to nice. beat. They yeah. come in kits, they come singly. Um, they're beautiful little sculpting tools. They got really nice sets. And I don't know if I pronounce it right. It's X-I-E-M, Zyme, is yeah. that right? And uh, so you'll pick out your, your own favorite tools and you'll find that when you lose one of them, all production stops. I've it done that before. So I'm gonna start on this and I'll, I'll kind of explain to you a little bit about what I'm doing and then I'll uh, I take the head off for you. You can kind of get ready. Remember in one of the last sessions we um, 
did that little square stock. I think you did it for him. And there's a female portion inside of the head. Now, anytime we want to see what that fish looks like, we're putting back together, you know, nothing can happen. It won't nice. fall off. You don't have to worry about wires going in the whole body. And when, when it's time to put this fish together for good, a little bit of epoxy on that in the hole, put it together and it'll never come off. Yeah. And shouldn't crack around here either. So there's your head. You can get ready, ready while I'm doing this. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of alcohol on my tool and I'm gonna fill my void and I'm gonna try to keep this off of, try to turn it this way so you can see. I'm gonna try to keep it off of the fin and if I get it up on the fish body, I will scrape it off. And let us know who's listening and where you're from. It's always fun to see what you want to see, what you don't want to see. Did I tell you I get to go to Australia hunting water buffalo? You Did I tell you that? You didn't. Craig's working on it, aren't you, Craig? We're gonna put you in the box with his stuff. Yeah, and we're gonna have uh, those cookies that Janet makes on our buffalo hunt. Dallas, hello from Georgia. Wes, checking in from Kansas. Okay, I just want a little bit here. Um, I don't know what you like. One of my favorite brushes is a little filberts yep i like those little yeah. filberts they're stiff whoops they're stiff <laughs> and uh um, they'll give you a nice nice smooth firm you can really shape your epoxy now you can always come in and add more if you if you uh do your fin and Tomorrow you come in and you go, oh man, I wish I'd have done a little more here. You can always add more. Yeah. But when this stuff hardens, it's hard as a rock. So that makes it very difficult to grind it down and redo it. So less is best. I'd rather have you um, have a light, a small divot or a trench that you have to fill a second time rather than overfill it and have to grind it down. When you start grinding, you're gonna hit that fin, you're gonna hit the skin, you're gonna do a lot of damage. So it's kind of nice if, if you have to come back and do it again, it's not a problem. So with that, I'll keep on working on this. And if you wanna show them your head there. You got another eye over there for me? Mm -hmm. Oh, lucky Thank you. you. <laughs> um, so we're gonna put the other eye in this fish. Uh, we set the backside eye earlier today just so to speed the process, but we're going to set one in here to match and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, fish eyes come in a few different varieties. This happens to be a flex eye. Um, we like them. Their coloration is nice. They're easy to use. Um, we use them on a lot of our commercial stuff here in the shop. Um, you can also paint your own. Um, you can use uh, some of the still life lenses. Um, you can use Tohican eyes, you can use uh, the um, aqua eye, um, several different ones out there. So we painted we, eyes for them once. We too, did. We? we did. If you want to have fun, I don't think any of the eyes we painted really looked like fish eyes, but it was but fun it was and fun. they looked exceptional. <laughs> um, I'm going to set this eye with clay, um, just the same sculpting material that Tom did, not, not stonework clay, but epoxy two-part epoxy called clay equal parts of A and B Come back over here to the water mix it up now we pre-fit this eye and this eye happens to fit very nicely in the opening um, it is a 12 millimeter eye but if you were to measure the opening on this fish head the opening is going to measure about 16 or 17 millimeters. That's because the eye is measured 
from the iris, which is this portion, the colored portion of the eye is where our measurement comes from, not the base, not the larger base. We do get that question often um, from beginners and that's a, something that you'll have to work with. So the eye measurements that you order an eye by is from the iris or colored portion. So this one fits in nicely. If it doesn't, um, whether it be a cast head or an artificial head, you can go in with your Dremel tool. You can remove some of the clay. If you mounted the real head and used some of our fish clay, um, that clay removes really easy with a tool. Um, often don't even have to use the dusty Dremel tool. If you use uh, critter clay, it's a little bit harder. You will have to grind that. But it's nice to have an opening that is actually deeper going down than, than the shelf here. So you want to be able to go down, like to be able to go back and forward, just to have plenty of movement. Now I'll take a little bit of that clay that's mixed up. And I'm just going to put some in here. I'm going to backfill a little bit of this eye opening. so that I can set the eye against it and it will hold tightly in place. The nice thing about a flex eye is just as the name implies, we can put a little bit of pressure on it, flex it, and it will expand to fill the gap. So we will take advantage of that for this eye. I've got a little bit of material in there. Now, typically, and use your reference material, but a fish eye will be slightly pear-shaped. The point of the eye will go forward. If you look closely at the pupil, the pupil points forward here. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm gonna make that face forward. And again, use your reference. There are several different fish out there that 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 doesn't hold true for, but for the most part, our freshwater, um, most of our warm water fish, that holds pretty true. Jimmy will probably show us a picture of a salmon that points, the pupil points down. Boy, they do too, don't they? Yeah. Um, we like them to be set at a depth that the bottom of the cheek contacts the eye so you don't have a big shelf. In a large rotation, if the fish's head was like this, this eye will try to self-level this way and often will kick in just a little bit. You'll have a little shelf here where it would push out on the, on the bottom of this offside eye. But if we're gonna set this just for our customer that we have, we'll set it pretty level and we'll set both eyes even and equal. Did you see Ryan Asma's new digs? I didn't. Oh my gosh. What's he got? Every outdoor guy would like to live there. I bet. He was talking about it when he was here. He's got deer on his back porch. Uh, that? On his back porch. Okay. So now that we have the depth set, um, I'm just gonna fill this gap just ever so slightly all the way around the eye. I'm, I'm not gonna build out on to the plastic very far, and I'm not gonna build down onto the eye very far. This is a nice fit. Um, so I'm just gonna fill that void. And then any of the excess, I'm just gonna scrape off. Did I use the right word, digs? That's how it's right. Yeah, that's all it's gonna be. And then what, threads? Threads that's clove, right? Nice yeah. threads. Yeah. I get mixed up. Uh, we'll go fill just a little bit around here. How's your fin coming? I think good. I've gone a, I've gone the length of here. I gotta take a little bit out of up there. Soft dorsal's good. This is the nice thing about working on all of these parts separate. The fins, you were able to paint those fins before we had them attached to the body. It's a little bit like 
when we started doing birds by cutting the feet off and the, the heads out, you can paint all those parts, hold them in your hand. Um, if something doesn't go well, you can wipe it off and start again yeah. without worrying about plumage. And um, kind of the same with the fish here. If you can frost a cake, you can work with this stuff. And this is Rick's clay, and your working time with this is probably going to be just a little bit shorter than epoxy sculpt or fix it sculpt for the guys that are used to using that. A little less working time. Um, which we, I found, is very nice because it sets up faster, allows you to move through, and you're not getting thumbprints on on areas. You can continue working uh, much quicker, much faster. I'm just going to scrape the excess off the perimeter, brush it down. Did you take my alcohol? No. Always look to Tom for the alcohol. Um, you have uh, been finishing deer heads. Have you been using clay for that? I have a little bit um, in my nostrils. Um, the only thing I would caution you on the clay is it does have a tiny bit of sheen. Um, so I, by putting a little bit of oil paint in it, um, I liked that. Killed the sheen just a little bit. I was able to pre-color it. What's your go-to color to do that for oil paint? For oil paint with the deer? Yeah. Um, I worked in more of a flesh color, flesh tone. Um, for the tar, we just did some finish work on the tar and that was a dark brown. And sometimes there's another product uh, called epoxy clay, which works real good on mm -hmm. African animals where you have very sparse hair and don't want a shiny epoxy. Does it matter what color clay, epoxy clay you can use on that, whether the natural or the white? On this part or any of both of them? Um, you're, you got to color it, so you got to make it the same color as the fish skin at some point, whether you do it now or do it later. I thought I was smart and I would try taking my lighter colored fix it sculpt and things like that and I put oil paint in it and then I would model my eyes in and top of the head and under the jaws only to find out that all of these epoxy putties change color when they set. They either darken or lighten and it's it's very difficult to stay ahead of the, the drying process for me. Yeah. So we kind of rely on get it kind of close and color it later. Yeah. I, me, do. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Me do. Um, another, another little tip, make sure you get, when you're setting eyes in epoxy, make sure you get the eye clean after you're very happy with the, with your modeling around the perimeter, um, make sure and clean the eye, clean all the epoxy off of it. The better job you do now, um, the easier it is when we get to the paint process. So I'm just going to take a little alcohol on the brush. Make sure that I've got that all nice and clean. That's pretty good. You can see? I think so. And then we can, uh, you can even paint your head separate, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. You can do a little bit of blending. Um, now that we could have painted this head a Ahead of the mounting process, but um, chose to wait until now. And the reason is that skin typically dries um, a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. And so now we need to make this white head match the skin tones over there. So we don't have to match it perfectly today, but we can do just a little bit of blending. Um, and to do that, um, we've got a little bit of Pre-Atex paint mixed, we pre-mixed. This is kind of a tip that we were given from the folks at Createx is to pre-mix your paints. 
and I've mixed just a little bit of the sepia tone and a little bit of the bloodline vial green. And what I'm looking for is the base color of the skin. So if we were to pan over there, um, you can see this light, light color and the dark green. Both of them have a slightly green cast. So that's what I've tried to shoot for in this dark mix. I've got it in the cup. Make sure everything's still going. And how long do you like to let the paint sit um, after you've mixed it before you start painting? Surprisingly, just past your frustration state yeah. when you try <laughs> painting when you first mix yes. it. Uh, yeah. it. Ten minutes is wonderful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I you'll, great. you'll notice yep. a tremendous difference. You'll fight really with well. it, fight with it, fight with it, and they call it emulsification or Ooh, big word. Like something that. like that. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was an excuse from the company because their paint didn't work very good, but some of these colors, ten minutes, you mix them ahead of time, and man, yeah. do they, they yeah. spray beautifully. I'm gonna hit the compressor here. And I'm just gonna go over this. Um, and all I'm looking for is a light blend. I'm really not gonna, I'm not trying to actually replicate the pattern on the fish just yet. Now, another tip. Um, you can take oil-based clay and put it over your eye um, to keep it nice and clean. You can also use eye protect or eye frisket. Um, both of those work well. Um, I gotta listen to you like a hawk because I learned so much of these oh, things. Oh, you do not. I do, do not. Been doing this longer than I. Have. You, I you, you, you probably hurt my feelings. <laughs> um, but you can put just a little bit on there and keep it, if you keep it thin, you won't get a shadow, but sometimes if you put that clay on too thick, it'll leave a shadow in front of your epoxy and then you'll have a ring around it. But um, you can see this is just kind of a dark brown, browny green. And I'm mostly spraying it over the scaled areas I think 99% of these new tricks and new things that we find we forgot about them from three yeah. years ago. We're we? done 20 years ago regularly and then we just forgot about them or, or hadn't been exposed to them but somebody's been doing them. Um, so I'm just going to put a little bit of paint on like that. Um, I'm going to step away real quick and grab some steel wool and then I'm going to take that off very lightly. Um, I've got a little bit of extra mixed up here and I've, I've kind of hit my seam all the way along here. Something we, I don't know if we mentioned or not about the clay is it's great to sand, much nicer to sand than some of the other epoxies. So um, if you do get a buildup that you don't like, it's, you can really sand this stuff nice. I started on the back of this fish on a seam and I did probably about three inches there. Um, this is a good product for that also. And I just, uh, I'm gonna put it right over my staples. If my staples stuck up too far, um, I probably would have to either pull them or pound them in. But I tried to seat them, you know, deep into the skin so they don't stick up. And I'm just troweling it on. And my clay is getting a little firm to work on. But uh, now I'm just going to smooth it out, feather it in, scrape off what rises above the skin. And we've used a lot of products on the back of our, our fish. Um, anything else you? you would use back there other than magic that? smooth we've used magic smooth a lot um, used to use auto body putty in the early days but that tends to crack yep. and I got a lot of fish back with cracks so 
Okay, and anytime you work with any of these epoxies, feathering, thinning it out at the edges is the most important trick you're going to learn, and that's just feathering it up onto the skin so that you can't tell where it starts and stops. And, and, even though we've had some commentary on these before, um, the other day I let this set up for, I don't know, 15 minutes. I took the, the uh, maxi scaler yeah. and uh, you can put a little bit of alcohol on it or another product as safety solvent and you can roll it one time down through there and you're not gonna see it, but it gave me a really pretty little scale pattern there that I think is gonna be real easy to paint. And I would, it's not a competition tool, but to make the back of your fish look good for a customer, I mean, it's great. Absolutely, yep. Been around forever. Yep. Um, so I've got just a little bit of steel wool and I'm gonna take, this is four out steel wool, it's, it's very fine. And we're just going to buff this. A lot of you guys that have done reproduction fish, it's, this is an old hat that we're going to show you here. How we're going to make that slightly varied scale pattern. Um, and the Createx paint the, does really well. Um, dries fast enough that this is a really good method for working with it. What's the purpose of doing that? So we're taking the, the paint off the surface. So if you look at this side, it's kind of solid and if we go over here to the area this that we buffed the steel wool is taking the paint off the high spot but leaving it in the low and what that does is accent each individual scale so we get a little bit of scale detail without a lot of effort um, rather than individually painting each one of those so we come through and steel wool each each of those areas you can also take a, if you're very brave, you can take just a little bit of your 4013 reducer on a paper towel and you can lightly, lightly touch against the, um, your painted surface and remove some of the paint that way. That's a little bit trickier because if you do too much, it will, it will take all of the paint. Um, so nice to use a very flat surface. Don't use a terry cloth towel because the terry cloth will get down into the scale detail. Um, you can put just a drop of that on. And this is what, oh, what did they refer to this as a soft, soft erase? erase. Um, but real easily we can buff this. As and you have a window for that too, don't yep, you? Yep, yep. Um, and they say that happens before, what is it, 48 hours? Before it makes an actual chemical bond between the layers of paint um, and your different substrates. Is that right? <laughs> Did I use it right? You're right. You're confusing these people. Uh, this Fancy all, words. my first, <laughs> man, he's laughing. My first experience with this was we had a painter painting our house a few years ago. And he said, I said, this paint is sticky. And he said, he said, that's latex paint. He said, it takes 28 days to cure. And I said, 28 days to cure on my walls? I'm not buying that. Well, it does. Like house, water-based paint on your house, latex paint doesn't dry like enamels do in, you know, right. several hours. And this Createx is very similar um, 48 hours, you will not do what you're doing there. It's stuck. Yes. Yeah. It's stuck it like glue. a nice bond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but for this time period, and that's that's one of the characteristics of the illustration paint that works very well. Um, and there are different Createx paints out there, different paint lines. There's Wicked Colors, which we carry, the illustration colors we carry. There are also a few different other um, Createx lines out there, but those two both work very well with um, this method. So we would just continue to go through on the head. You can come in with your reference material and paint some details. We've got the back portion of the gill cover here. You can see there's some dark accents and we might just start to build some of that 
um, contrast now. And this, this paint paints very well both wide spray, like we showed you a minute ago, and very fine. It also paints very, very fine detail as well. So I can come in the back of this gill cover and just accent right here. And I'm just going to continue to build contrast. ready to swim away yet? Well, he's getting there. I think he's going to look pretty decent. Um, now, the other fins, I have paired fins. I got two of his um, pelvics and pectorals, and uh, I'll take those, and I'll warm them up with the heat gun and shape them the way I want them. And uh, I probably won't put those on until I might paint them like I did these, but I think I'll paint most of this fish, then put the fins on, then sure. fix the unions, and you don't get any overspray. You don't have to worry about painting this dorsal fin and getting a bunch of overspray down the side of the fish that you have to get rid of. So yeah. that's kind of one of the advantages of doing this. It's not like a, a bird where I would, you take the, the feet off and the bill off, I wouldn't cut the rest of his fins off just because it's easier to paint them. But since they're not attached, they work pretty good. And I would just keep going on this back. The nice nice part, we showed you how to make these stands and how to bondo in that fish. Um, if you want to work on the back of this fish, I can pretty easily bend him down like that with that annealed wire. That wire bends really nice. I can work on him a little bit a little bit uh, at the right angle. I'm going to scrape a little bit of my clay off. Now remember, you can sand it if you have to, but if you come closer the first time of application, you won't have to sand. We also have the Euro pins, which is the giveaway to make sure you like and share the video. But they're sold in a hundred pack. There's three different sizes or 20 packs. And then we have a kit of 20 of each, which we're going to be giving away at the end to make sure to like and share the video. And then also for those of you, Clint's probably watching because I hear he's a huge fish guy, right? Yeah, he is. But in his free time, he's making DVDs. And I did notice for those of you that want to win a free molding and casting video produced by Paul Kurt Shank and Clint Ricky is the main actor in that. But great video. 
Taxidermy University is giving one away. So make sure to go to their Facebook page, like the page, go to the main um, post, which would be the Taxidermy University post, and tag another taxidermist that you think you should have a free chance to win. That's a great giveaway. That's $230 DVD series right there with a lot of tricks and stuff in. The nice thing about these ads, um, as in all the XP ads, is most earliners, most commercial earliners, will index in there. These are the WP, whatever? 300. 300? WP1, 300. 300 WP. Uh, and you can't get that wrong. It indexes right in there. Um, we have Ohio ears. They are all, it's modeled for yeah, all the, the height is correct. Yeah, it's good. Um, if you like a buttless ear, here's the ear canal. There's an index for the ear canal, and that will lay in there just like that. It's nearly foolproof. Genius. Nearly foolproof. These are uh, sculpted by Brian Olson, Pat Wagner, Mark Donnery. Yeah. Um, we've got some three very high-powered whitetail people creating a lot of good, good deer products for you people. And we've been mounting on them recently. Jig and Jim wants to know, he saw using threaded rod for fish. How does the annealed rod for working on the bottom of the fish? Annealed uh, wire. I would like with this wire. I would just tip that whole mount on the side, and I would just take. Hey, watch, I'm gonna do this and bust him off. But I would just bend that like that. Work on his belly. Flip him back. You want to do his back? Um, that annealed wire, you can bend 50, 100 times before it's ever gonna break. Uh, threaded rod works well. We use it when we have to on the big fish. Big pipe, um, threaded rod, rod works okay. I never enjoy working with it like it do the wire. And uh, we don't have wire heavy enough for those big pipe and muskies. What do you guys got going next week? We'll probably wrap this up, I'm thinking. Put him together, um, have the fins painted, Maybe put some gills in him, have his head um, roughed in. We might show you a little bit of painting tricks. And then we need to move on to something else. Look at that. Oh, that looks nice. Isn't that looking good? Mm -hmm. hmm. You've done this before? A time or two. Or three. <laughs> um, so we'll catch everyone next week. The winner of last week's giveaway is... Jay Horst. So congratulations. congratulations on that. You got yourself some Euro pins. And then again, remember to like and share for next week's giveaway. And then also go to Tax Army University's um, Facebook page, like their page, like the post, and then also share the post on their page. So if you see somebody else post it, like us or whatnot, go to the original one if you want a chance to win the $230 DVD. We've talked about um, there. Cole's um, Tax Army University DVDs before, and and I can't tell you how good they are. Cole is a great producer, uh, but not only that, Clint Ricky's a pretty darn good actor. I mean, <laughs> he and Streisand, I could just see him up on the big screen <laughs> because he's born to be in front of the camera. He really oh is. He's uh, he doesn't stutter. He he's a yeah. great speaker, great instructor, and he is a good instructor. Check stuff. those out. And give us a call if you have any questions, 1-800-488-3256, or visit us online at www.matuskataxonary.com. And remember, all the Facebook products that the guys talk about during our lives are 15% off automatically on Facebook with FBOOK15 as a code, and it's good through tomorrow night. So check that out and take advantage of it. Pays for your shipping. Very cool. We'll do another segment on shipping one of these days. Oh, we should. Oh, that'd be a yeah. good one. That'd be a really shipping good one. in boxes and things I like that. Saving. Teach people yeah. a couple things. Don't yeah. order one form through FedEx. <laughs> <laughs> Our boxes fit four. 
<laughs> but right. stay tuned and let us know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning yeah. in, everybody.